Uh, this is Lawrence, the Avid Gamer, and tonight, for your viewing pleasure, we have Grim Dawn. I'm starting this new Let's Play of Grim Dawn. For anybody that doesn't know, this is uh, a game that got started in early access on Steam by the developers who gave us Titan Quest, probably one of the greatest ARPGs ever to be made. <coughs> Excuse me. And they are back with Grim Dawn, which is actually built off the original, well, not the original, but a modified version of the Titan Quest engine. And uh, hopefully in the near future, we're going to be getting, ex getting an, an expansion to this fabulous game. So I figured, well, what the heck, now would be a great time to do a Let's Play. So here I am, and this is, as the title uh, clearly states, Let's Play 2K. So if you've got a monitor that can display at 2560 by 1440 or better, then uh, you're in for a treat, because you'll be able to watch this at a greater resolution than what 1080 generally offers you. If you've ever uh, considered upgrading your computer monitor beyond 1080, now is probably a good time to do so. Uh, prices on 2K monitors, uh, 2560 by 1440, or even 2560 by 1600, uh, prices are, are lower than they've ever been. And um, if you're rocking a powerful graphics card, like a GTX 1080 or 1070, or even an RX 580, um, this is a very viable option. And once you play at this resolution, you'll never want to go back to 1080p. That being said, anybody that has a 1080p monitor, you can still enjoy this video as well, just at a reduced resolution. With that being said, I'm going to start my new adventures with Avid Gamer, level 1. And we're probably going to turn her into a spellcaster, because I've never done one of those, and... I'm kind of interested to see what that's like. Um, anybody, just in case anybody's wondering, uh, this is a brand new system build. You can check out the specs in the drop down below the video. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, AMD Ryzen 5 1600 CPU with 16 gigs of RAM, and um, the graphics are being handled by the new EVGA GeForce GTX 1070 for the Win 2. So this is a quite a robust machine when it comes to playing games and when it comes to doing anything productivity related, at least in my opinion anyway. It will uh, outperform any of Intel's four core offerings when it comes to productivity, and when it comes to gaming, it is more than capable of hanging with any of the aforementioned Intel products. So, I'm pretty happy with the system, needless to say. With that being said, um, let's get, uh, let's just go ahead and jump right into this. Oh yeah, one more thing. Um, I do have this running at 2560 by 1440. Um, you can see all my settings are very high and high, with the exception of anti-aliasing, which I have turned off. At 1440p, it is my opinion that you don't need anti-aliasing. The only thing that's going to do is take away resources from your video card, and it's just not necessary. So with that being said, I have that turned off. But that's about the only thing that is turned off. Everything else is pretty good to go here. And with that, let's get going. I think I've I think I've talked enough. We paid a heavy price, but the trap worked. 
You seem surprised. It's been a while since we've had a win. How long will it hold? I've never entrapped a being like this. But the bonds hold, for now. How do we dispose of it? I'm just a witch. You're the soldier. If it bleeds, I can kill it. How do you kill a spirit, though? If you kill the mortal vessel while it's bound, the spirit may perish within. If it escapes... It's listening to us. What are you? Others of your kind name us the Furion. Why have you invaded our world? Your world. We existed first and were managed by your corrupt gods. Your part will be the way of how we return to the claim of my right to be ours. I've heard enough of this rubbish. Let's hang it. Oh, excuse me. Well, there you go. And there's the intro. One of the things I like about this game is the story is a lot different from the typical ARPG tropes. The typical ARPG, you know, one man versus the, you know, one man versus the world, invincible type of stories that many of these games try to paint. In Grim Dawn, um, the world is already lost, and the only thing that remains are a few scattered pockets of resistance. So in this game, it's more of a survival horror experience than it is, in many cases anyway, than an action RPG, because, you know, you're not there to save the world, you're there to just try to survive and make the best of, of what's left. Or as, uh... As Sting once said, when the world is going down, you make the best of what's still around. <laughs> and that's pretty much the motto here. But with that being said, let's, uh, let's get into this, shall we? Still drawing breath, I see. You're one lucky bastard, I'll give you that. Best go speak to Captain Bourbon right away. He seems to have a plan for you now that we've spared your life. You were possessed. So we, uh, strung you up. Seems the spirit fled your body before your life ran out. I'd have left you to hang, but uh, the captain had other plans. He sees some purpose in you, and I'm not going to argue. He's um, up the road, in the courtyard. Don't make me regret cutting you down. Okay, so we're not the most loved person at this point in the game. We just got saved from possession and then from death and uh time to go check out this Captain Bourbon guy and see what's going on and I suspect I could be wrong but I suspect get our first mission maybe maybe let's see you're not looking too bad for someone just come back from the brink of death you were taken possessed by the same creatures that have been reanimating these zombies here 
Normally I'd have burned you with the rest to be safe, but we've lost too many people to the dead. I need someone expendable. Someone with nothing to lose, but a lot to gain. Right now, you're that person. Prove your worth to me, and the survivors of Devil's Crossing may just welcome you. The bodies of the dead are rising again in some horrible unlife. Corpses don't just get up and move around on their own. Something is reanimating our deceased with ethereal energy. We have observed the dead for some time, and they appear to be flooding lower crossing from the burial hill, just beyond town. I want you to go to the burial hill, find whatever is controlling these abominations, and destroy it. You will need to fight your way through Lower Crossing. Once you've crossed the stream on the far side of town, there will be a beaten path leading up to Burial Hill. I know I'm asking a lot of you, but I'd be asking a lot of my people to welcome you with open arms, too. Help us in our hour of need, and I will open Devil's Crossing to you. Okay, so we've, uh, pardon my uh, sniffling, I got a little bit of a head cold. But in any event, we've got our first mission. Enter the cave under Burial Hill. If you haven't noticed already, we never really chose a character class or profession. And, uh, that's one of the interesting things about, uh, about, um, Grim Dawn. And it's basically the same if you've ever played Titan Quest. Uh, when you start this game out, you don't choose any profession. You start out as basically a level one nothing, a level one nobody, and it's not until your next level, your second level, um, that you actually get to choose a path or a profession that you want to, you know, pursue. Which is an interesting take on things, I think, so. anyway. Oh boy. This cold is killing me. I'm going to try to sniffle as little as possible. All right. Oh, let's see. Who are the people in your neighborhood? <laughs> Who are the people in your neighborhood? Oh, boy. Yeah, the welcoming committee. I thought the ghetto was bad. <laughs> Alrighty. So, if you haven't noticed yet, uh, Grim Dawn is not your typical fantasy ARPG. It's kind of based off of a steampunk uh, technology meets magic environment. I should say low technology meets magic environment and um i i really like that a lot it just gives a different flavor a different you know a different feel to the game i enjoy it it's a refreshing change from what we're used to hmm level two gotta love it I'm going to dump a point in spirit, and I'm going to choose my profession, which is going to be the Arcanist. There we go. And... As you can see here, this is the skill tree, and as you dump points into the, into the bottom bar here, that progresses uh, the uh, amount of available skills that you have at your disposal. Um, I think for this Let's Play, I'm really going to focus on doing something that I very rarely do, which is to try to build a pure Arcanist character class. I'm not going to split class this character at all. I'm going to try to max this character out, and that's what I'm going to do. So with that being said, I'm going to put a point there and there and that's it 
Why? Because I said so. <laughs> In any event. Just being a wise ass. Alright. Let's see what trouble we can get into. Um, first I need to set up my... There we go. Attack from the back. Alrighty. That's an interesting thing that you don't see in a lot of ARPG games. The enemies actually fighting amongst themselves. That's really cool. I happen to, to dig that a lot. <clears throat> you know, when, when you're a veteran of these types of games, it's funny the, the, the little things that you pick up on, the little things that you notice. And that's one of the things that kind of, like, grabbed me when I first started playing this. Like, wow, the enemies actually fight against each other. It's total chaos. <clears throat> it's chaos in its purest form. Which I like. Hmm, we like chaos, yeah. And let's check out the note. Francis's note. I'm trapped here. I realize now I will die in this house. Margaret, I fear that you are already dead, and so it may not be so bad if I am not shortly to join you. If by some miracle you yet live and return here to find this note, please know that I am not angry with you. I never regretted our life together, but now only regret that I lost my temper and spoke unkind words when we last parted. I hope you will not think me a coward for what I am about to do. They are already in the house. I barricaded myself in this room, but it is only a matter of time before they break through. All I can now do is choose the manner in which I face death, and I would rather die a man than be changed into one of those hard things, or eaten alive. I will love you always, Francis. Aw, oh, how sweet. In any event, he's gone. If you actually stop to read the the notes that are shrewn throughout the levels, it it really adds to the immersion and the experience. I would highly recommend that you actually do it. It's actually worth it. The writing in this game is far better than the majority of ARPGs out there. For a matter of fact, I think, you know, it's definitely not going to win any Academy Awards, but it's far better than just about anything I've ever played as far as story goes. It's much more compelling. At the very least, it's enough to keep me interested and actually have me reading the notes when I find them because I'm interested in, in seeing, you know, how the writers, how the writers, um, decided to progress the story. So I would chalk that up to some halfway decent writing. Just a little warning to anybody out there who doesn't know this already, but if you're looking to build a new PC, do yourself a big favor and wait. Because, um, I built this PC about, I don't know, a little over a week ago. Um, the cryptocurrency craze is at full bore. And, um, just know if you're gonna build a system right now, you're probably gonna pay at least $100 more for your video card than it's actually worth. And in some cases, you may pay up to $150 more. I mean, these prices are insane. I... I can honestly tell you, I probably spent about a, oh, let's see, about $90 more than what I should have on the video card. That being said, um, I had about a $1,000 budget, and I went over budget by about $200, and that was a lot for me. The system ended up costing about 1200 bucks, which was ridiculous, and um, it definitely is going to have me... Uh, living in the poor house for a while, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? That being said, I'm, I'm very proud of this system. 
probably more proud of this system than any other PC that I've ever built. Just due in fact to the idea that we actually have real competition once again in the CPU market. And I expect Intel to be in the very near future dropping some prices on some CPUs. And I personally am not a fanboy. I don't care about AMD, Intel, or NVIDIA for that matter. When it comes to building a PC, I always buy what I can afford first and foremost. And second of all, the best product that I can get for my money. And I never allow brand loyalty to get in the middle of that. So that being said, this system is rep representative of what I could afford, the best that I could afford um, at the time of the building of the machine. And, um, but that being said, what, even if you are an Intel or AMD fanboy, um, everybody benefits when there's competition. Because now even the Intel guys, you're going to start to see price drops on some of those CPUs, and it's going to be much more desirable for you guys and a much more pleasurable experience when you do decide to upgrade your rigs due to the fact that you should be um, experiencing some better prices. And that's always a good thing. I'm really interested to see what AMD is going to end up doing and how their new Vega GPUs are going to turn out. I'm hoping that they give AMD, I mean, sorry, hoping that they give NVIDIA a really good run for their money because I would love to see prices drop on NVIDIA's hardware as well. I think that that would be... I think that that would be great. And, uh... If the Vega GPUs are that much more powerful than what I've already got now, which, as I said, is the GTX uh, 1070 for the win. If the Vega GPU is that much better, I'll be more than happy to sell that video card and upgrade to a Vega. But personally, AMD has not had a really great stellar track record when it comes to their video cards. I like what they did with their Polaris series GPUs. I like the fact that they've made them much more efficient, but they still really have not been able to challenge AM, I mean Nvidia in a way that would actually have them worried, you know? So, we'll just have to see what happens there. That being said, the only way I'm even going to consider getting rid of my EVGA for the win too is if the Vega GPUs basically trounce NVIDIA. They would have to be, it would have to be a clear victory for me to do that because I'm actually very happy. Um, I've always, if I've ever been a fanboy of anything, I've always appreciated EVGA. They're probably one of the top video card manufacturers in the world right now. And if you own one of the, you know, higher end EVGA um, video cards, and it's a current product, you know, you would be wise to hang on to it. Let's just put it that way. You can't do much better than that. But I've run my mouth enough. Let's get back to the game. I don't know if you guys can actually see the frame rate counter on the top left of the screen, but I am averaging around 113 frames per second with this system build running at 1440p, So, and everything completely maxed out. As I said, I turned anti-aliasing off because as you can see, it's really not necessary at resolutions above 1080p. It's just not necessary. That being said, um, yeah, it's it's running damn well. Very happy with the system. Not really happy about 
the extra 200 I had to pay to build it, but you know what? There's no point in crying over spilled milk. What's done is done. Okay, we are fighting our way door, door to door, street by street. The combat is pretty brutal. got two tones or yeah it looks like we've got oh sorry journals we got some journals to check out I think we should do that and see what else we got going on this looks like a safe place or as safe as any uh, I think it's time to drop that on do a little upgrading. Hmm. I think we're gonna have to, yeah, drop that on. Right? Looks like we've got a few logs. I didn't read the Harbor Master's log, but, uh, why not? Let's check it out. Okay, the Harbor Master's log. Ordem fogs are appearing early this time of year, but the traffic remains unusually high. There is a steady flow of small craft coming down from Malmouth and other towns to the northeast. Some of these boats are barely afloat, burdened with what looks like people's every possession. These travelers, sometimes entire families, bring with them strange tales of wars and the unnatural. Bunch of hogwash riling up the soft townsfolk. Can't complain, though. Keeps the dock busy. Most are westbound, trying to get as far away as they can. The lads at the docks are starting to lose their nerve. Some have talked about settling out west themselves, but I've assured them this is all nonsense and will pass. Youth are easily caught up in the energy of the moment. Well, by the looks of things, he was dead wrong with that, uh... With that summation, uh, that approximation. He was a little bit wrong there. Let's just say that. <laughs> he was off the mark. <laughs> okay, Inquisitor Creed. I am currently en route to the village of Burwich in order to investigate a number of strange incidents that have been reported in this area. As dusk is drawing near and the swamps of this region are said to be hazardous to travel at night, I've reluctantly taken up lodging at a small squalid tavern in Lower Crossing. Perhaps I am weary from my hurried travels, but I feel as if there is a strange pressure and electricity in the air. It is almost akin to the still before a thunderous summer gale. But yet the sun shines and not a cloud is to be seen. Everything seems as it should, but in my gut I feel that something terrible will soon come to pass. Hmm, you think? And the second entry. As I was packing to resume my journey to Burwich, my assistance was urgently requested at a lodging camp in the Old Grove, west of Devil's Crossing where strange animal attacks have left three lumbermen listless and pale, 
Upon arriving, I received somber greeting from the foreman, who informed me that the bitten workers had gone mad and fled the premises. They were reported to have spoken in an unknown tongue. The foreman showed me the remains of the animals, two gray foxes and a hound, suffering some sort of horrific mange, lay in a hasty dug pit behind the outhouse. The foreman told me the animals suddenly died when confronted by the workers and a strange green vapor emanated from their remains. Shortly afterwards, the three lumbermen fell ill and their mental state rapidly deteriorated. It appears that my presence in this region is most warranted. Hmm, the plot thickens. And we've got another point, which I'm going to dump into spirit again. And uh, we got some more points to work with, so we're going to go straight here. And that's that. All right. Moving right along. We are blocked off here. I can either come in that way or I can go that way. Uh-oh. Ooh. Uh-oh, boss. Ooh. And another level. We are just grabbing levels like a boss. <laughs> All right, we'll take that. And we'll take that. And we'll take that. And I don't need food rations. I'm going to leave it. You never know. I might come I might come into a situation where I need that sometime in the future. The food rations do remain there. So, if you don't need them, it may behoove you to leave them behind. Ah, uh, nothing good. Hmm. Okay. I think I know where to go. Bushwhack. There we go. <clears throat> Bushwhacked him. Aw. We got ourselves a... A stowaway. Some poor guy hiding in the house. Faldus, what are you doing here, buddy? We're all gonna die out here. Calm down. Where are you from? I was staying with a group of survivors down in Devil's Crossing. Well, I'm not gonna read all this. You guys can pause it and read it if you'd like to. I will read the journals, however. Alright, I'm not going back. Oh, yes you are. Let's see. Anytime you have an opportunity to save these characters, you should absolutely do so. Now you can see, speak to Faldus inside Devil's Crossing. A lot of times you'll get missions from these characters, or you'll just get some good old-fashioned experience, which is never a bad thing. Uh, I don't pick up normal items, only magical ones, so in case you're wondering. Okay. All right, got some mobs up here. All right, we've got a rift gate. And if I wanted to, I could return to Devil's Crossing, but unfortunately, we've got work to do. Uh, so, let us continue.
Alrighty. Clear out the riffraff. Nope. Denied. Oh, and there we are. We have reached the cave entrance. However, I'm a big believer in clearing out the surrounding area, so let's see what we can do here. Oof. That spell is getting pretty powerful. I'm starting to like this Arcanus character a lot. Another level. I'm just gonna let these guys fight it out. This is something I really love about this game. Um, I love the fact that enemies fight with each other. It just—it's just total chaos in this game world, where you actually, you actually have your enemies warring against each other. So basically, nobody's safe. That being said, let's go check it out. All right. We should dump one in cunning and one in physique. And next time around, I'll throw some more spirit in there for good measure. Let's get over here and get to work. This is my bread and butter ability, so I'm going to go right here. Dump them all in there. Oh, wow. Wow. Launch that dude right out of the... <laughs> Launched him right out of the house. That was a classic. Alright. I don't want to stray too far away from the objective, but... Yep, it's time to get busy. Back off. Back off. What the? Nope. 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 All right. That worked out. Got to pay attention here. I'll take that. Oh, yeah. I am definitely liking this uh, arcane, this arcanist character. This is a lot of fun. Here we go. Let's get it on. Ah, you missed. And you are out of there. Take some scrap, I'll take some rolling blood. Oh, we got a whole bunch of magic stuff. Let's see what's going on. Ooh, hey. I've already got magic boots, plus six movement, plus five percent pierce, fire resistance. I don't know, I think I'll keep what I got on. I don't see any major benefit to switching. This on the other hand is an absolute 
must have. Alrighty. Yeah, I'm gonna keep what I got as far as firearms are concerned. What is this? Eh. No, thank you. Okay. As a general rule of thumb, I don't pick up anything that's not magical. It's just not worth it. What have we here? Uh-oh. Well, we cleared them out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. You gotta... You gotta love the... You gotta love the spellcasters, you really do. Generally, I always play the tankier, warrior-style characters, but you definitely gotta love what these guys can do. As long as you can keep them at range, and you pump a lot of uh, skill points into your spell abilities, you can just wreak havoc on enemies with these characters. And here are... Or, uh, I should say, this is the reason for the collecting of all of the Aether Crystals. Um, you can use these crystals for various things, including restoring defiled shrines. So, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give up an Aether Crystal, and... Generally speaking, um, the further on you go, the, the better the loot drops, but this loot drop sucks but it's also the first one you come across so I can't uh, I can't be too mad about it well, I could but it's not gonna change anything so let us proceed out my way oh I love that got a three for <laughs> a three fur. Gotta love the three fur. Alrighty. And that's it. Yeah, we've wiped it out. Beautiful. Can I get out of here? Can I get out of here? Hello. Hmm. A little glitchy. You didn't want to let me out the door. Uh oh. Welcoming committee. Alrighty. Gotta love that. And, uh... Gets it's time to get out of here. Alright. Getting all kinds of loot. Life, liberty, and loot. That's what it's all about here. Uh-oh, got another welcoming committee. And that should be that. Okay, almost. Uh-oh. They're really rolling out the carpet for me here.
Okay, we've been all the way up through there. Let's get back to town. The dead attacks have slowed and their numbers are thinning. I take that as a sign that you've dealt with the source? I have killed the reanimator. A creature was doing this? Disturbing. Thanks to your efforts, we may yet hold out here a little longer. I've sent word to the gate guard. Speak to him and he should let you in. Take some well-deserved time to rest and recover. Welcome to Devil's Crossing. Why, thank you. I need some time to plan our strategy. In the meantime, there are others around Devil's Crossing who could use your help. Take a moment to mingle with your fellow survivors. Kasparov, our resident scientist, is really eager to speak with you. He babbled some nonsense, but I believe he wants to talk about your connection with the Ethereals. Barnabas, our handyman, said he needed help with our water pump. When you're done assisting him, speak with me in my office inside the prison. Alrighty, so we've completed the first mission. And I'd uh, like to thank each and every one of you for checking out this video, if you've watched it all the way through to the end. Um, obviously, I haven't bored you to death. <laughs> In any event, if you have not played this game, if you don't own it, um, by all means, pick it up. It's a fabulous game. If you're into these isometric RPG-style games, these Diablo-esque type games, um, yeah, I would highly recommend picking this up. It is one of the better ones available today. It's definitely better than Diablo 3, but that's not saying much. Um, it's a great game made by a group of guys that really know what they're doing, really know how to design a fantastic ARPG, and it shows. And I'm going to continue on with this Let's Play, and I'm probably going to go ahead and... Uh, run uh, t uh, Titan Quest the Anniversary Edition. I'll probably record that side by side with this one and uh, get that up on YouTube as well. So, you know, stay tuned for that. And with that being said, if you like the content here, please like, subscribe. I would love to uh, chat with you. I'd love to have you a part of the avid gamer community that I'm trying to build here. So, um, with that being said, thank you all. God bless each and every one of you. Godspeed, and I'll see you on the next one.